G'day. We're going to take a very quick pause to do a little bit more advanced file management because what I realized was in many of our experiments we're going to do repeated testing on the same subject potentially over multiple days. And so what we want to do is essentially create just one file and not create 10 or 12 different files with bits and pieces of data, each session stored separately. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify our code to basically say, right, um, does a file exist for this subject? If it does, we're going to use that and add our current experiment to the end of that. Or if no file exists, we'll create a file. So using the um, convention, the file name convention that we had before, we're going to essentially create a temporary file. And we're going to call that something like pull file because we're going to try and pull data out. And if we can do that successfully, then we'll say, hey, it exists. And we're going to send that information to the other function of our program. But if pull data does not exist or if that file does not exist, it's going to say, OK, not a problem. We'll create one from scratch using today's date. So in order to do that, we have to ask our experimenter, um, what was the date of the experiment? And we'll make this an input and put uh, what uh, enter uh, experiment date. And we'll remind our users that we want year, year, month, month, date, date format. And then we'll create this thing called pool file. And pool file is going to be file path plus how do we organize our, our um, ordinary experimental files. It's the file path plus the uh, date of experiment. We're going to make that just a little bit shorter. And we're going to put an equal sign there. Date of exp plus it's going to be the, how do we save this? Let's have a look down. Uh, here we go. Experiment date plus sub ID plus task ID plus, remember it's going to be a .csv file. Okay, so now what we're going to say is we're going to say try pool data. We're going to look to see if the pool data equals open pool file. And we're going to try and read that file. And if it exists, we're going to say print uh, debug uh, percent s so that's the file file exists in the folder this is not a load routine this is not a load routine and then what we want to do is we want to return uh, so pull data ah we want to close that and then we'll say, OK, um, our file name, uh, save file, uh, we'll just say file name equals pull file. And then we'll return that. OK, if not pull data, we're going to say, OK, print. Uh, debug a problem with pull data over there with finding previous file. Okay, so except, so if we couldn't do that first bit or if we've successfully done this, we then want to make our own file from scratch. So what we're going to do is we'll cut this, we'll put this just up the top here, get it out of the way. All right, so accept, and then we essentially want to do exactly what we did before. So, uh, donk, bop. Right, so now that we're returning a file name, We'll say uh, file name equals, because we're going to pass that file name between two functions now, um, because we're going to use that file name in our experimental update, our main program, to get the current status of the experiment and then update the current phase within inside that 
uh, psychometric function or that uh, uh, specific experiment. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just see or print out what's present in that file name. So we'll say something like, now I've got a previous example up here, just to remind myself, we'll say um, current file, I will just say temp file data equals uh, pd.read csv. So here you go, pandas read csv, and we wanted to read file name. And then we'll print that out. So if this works, we shall see, or we should have greater control over the file output. So let's actually bring up our current folder. There's nothing in there. So we'll say, okay, ag, task ID, we'll do a queued. And let's just pretend that the experiment date was here. So we'll go 13, oh, sorry, 190331. And it said, okay, uh, nothing was, uh, the file wasn't saved. Uh, sorry, no file was found. So therefore it created a file. Great. Uh, we'll see if we can do that again. Um, and we'll make just another file. So we'll change the, uh, so we'll still make it this, we'll make this method of limits now, and the experimental date was say uh, 190331. Okay, it's created a second file, great. Now, let's put in, actually let's modify one of these files, we'll, we'll modify this queued uh, Excel spreadsheet, so we'll go like this, and we'll just cut and paste in just some data, 012, and we'll put here 110, so 0110, We'll then save that, close that down, do not save. So hopefully if we put in the correct information here, it should load up that file that, that already exists. So the subject's initials was AG, it was a queued, and it was done on 090331. Okay, and it said, right, uh, the file exists in the folder. Ah, so I've got an error here. I didn't define that percent %s. So it exists in the folder. This is not a load routine. That's fine. And here we go. We've got um, the file that we've currently got loaded up. And you can see we've got 0110, which is the correct thing that we put into that save file. So great. Here is um, an increased control over file saving. We're not always going to create a new file, but rather we'll first check to see if a file exists. If it does exist, we'll use that. If it does not exist, we'll create a new one. And it will be of the same format as the way that we always save our files. Date, subject ID, task ID, .csv. So we'll leave this video here and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right.